In this module I'm going to show you how you can create simple animation using keyframes from images that have been created in Adobe Photoshop. And this is an example of what you can do with very crude drawings, and they're very crude drawings, but very simple drawings edited in Photoshop, imported into Premiere Element 7 and animated using keyframes. Don't go away. Now, in order to undertake this next project, what we need to do is to create a new project. And I'm going to do that right now with uh, this by naming our new one. Um, I think I'll just call it uh, Seascape. Why not? Seascape. Uh, the project is going to be saved in the same folder, the Home Movies folder, within My Documents as the previous stuff that we've been working on, and I'm still going to assume the same project settings, PAL DV widescreen. Um, so I'm happy with all of that lot, so let's just click OK. And the first thing we see is the default workspace within Premiere Element 7 with nothing in it, as you'd expect. Now, we now should have in, in the projects uh, drop down, we've got two projects. One is my project, which is all the stuff I was messing around with in previous uh, tutorials and which I will be going back to. And also the newly created one, which is Seascape, and this shows you all of the assets or at least the space where the assets will be stored within this project. So let's put some there. Let's go to Get Media. Now, again, as I've shown you, we can pull in assets from a whole variety of sources here. I want to go to PC Files and Folders, and I already have some images that have been uh, put into place and available for us to import in the My Documents, My Pictures folder. And these are the layers that have been prepared in Photoshop Elements. Now. If you're familiar with Photoshop, you'll know that we build things up in layers and we have independent control of those layers in a still image sense. And if we export those individual layers out into Premiere Elements, we can then assign each of the image layers across to their own video layer, their video track within Premiere Elements. And uh, it just takes a bit of care to keep everything separate but once they're, uh, once they're imported into Premiere Elements, we have individual control over them on their own layer, and that's exactly what I want to do here. So, I've selected them all, let's click Open, and it's done it, as you can see here. Now, we know their images because they've got this little JPEG uh, icon, or image icon anyway, they're not JPEGs, they're uh, PNG files, actually. So, the principle with uh, Premiere Elements and with the full-blown Premiere and also with many many other equivalent video editing programs is that we build from the lowest track first upwards but the track on the top is the one that takes precedence over the ones below it and in this sense our animation is such that we want the objects in the foreground of our picture to take precedence over the ones in the background so it's a good idea to build up the background first and then work forward so the background obviously consists of blue sky so there's blue sky I want this to be about 10 seconds long so let's just drag this up to 10 seconds now let's go to the next layer coming from back to front and that is the sky and I'll put this on video 2 and I'll pull that forward like that and then uh, the next one is a cloud so put that on video 3 notice that uh, I haven't got any associated audio layers there apart from video 1 and the reason is that uh, I've actually cleared them down just before I started in case you're wondering where they went I will now need to add more layers so I'm going to go timeline add tracks I don't need any audio tracks so I'm going to select 0 but I do need quite a few video tracks so I'm going to select another uh, 9 uh, that may be more than I need but really doesn't matter so if I do that now what you'll see if I spin it up you can see that I've got plenty more layers and I'm going to need most of them for this so I've put one cloud down so let's now put another cloud in place so that's two you can see in the monitor screen that things are building up quite nicely already so that's the first step in uh, actually keyframing your uh, movie and um, all we need to do now is to proceed with little fiddles to the other layers so what I'll do is I'll make uh, simple little moves, I'm not going to do it as complex because they're further away, to the other layers as well. So if I go to this one um, and I'll put in a keyframe at the start, then I'm going to move it to about here 
and I'm going to put another keyframe in. So all I'm going to do is put slight up and down movements on this one, basically because there's too much involved, and I think you get the drift now anyway, right to about there. And then I come over to here, and I put another keyframe in, and I come back up a little bit, and then I put another one in here, and uh, there'll be one more before the end. So I'd maybe just come up a little tiny bit there like that and then I go to the end there and one more and then down just a smidgen so that's that one and let's just check it it's a good idea to check everything as you do it yep you can see it's moving there that's fine okay now what I'm going to do is come to the uh, f the most distant uh, bit of C put this right back at the beginning 